please call to order in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act. Notice of this meeting was provided to the Home News Tribune, the Star Ledger, and the Highland Park Planet on April 24th, on April 18, 2024, and was posted on Borough Hall website at www.hpborough.com and has and on the bulletin board of Borough Hall at 221 South 2nd Avenue, South 5th Avenue on Highland Park, <laughs> as, <laughs> as required by law. <laughs> okay, let me do this. <laughs> I'm sorry. On a very serious note, on April 18, 2024, and was posted on Borough Hall website at www.hpborough.com and on the bulletin board of Borough Hall at 221 South 5th Avenue in Highland Park and has remained continuously posted as required by law. Fire exits are to my left and right of council chambers. Can you read us on the Pledge of Allegiance? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mayor Foster. Yes. Councilman Canavera. Councilman George. Here. Councilman Neal. Here. Council President Hirsch. Here. Councilwoman Ken Chohan. Here. Councilman Pistone. Here. Board Attorney Shaw. Here. Borough Administrator Hogar. Here. This is a work session. No formal action will be taken. Items up for discussion. Annual best practice checklist review. Tax, tax assessor shared service. Protocol proposal. I'm having a mood. Community orientation police services COP grants. Plan for retaining a RP fund. Shuttle bus capital request. So let's start off with the best practices. So um, I distributed the scoring sheets from our our annual survey or in, they call it an inventory. This is just as a reminder. This is a required. Um, survey, they require every municipality to fill out as part of uh, getting your local aid every year. Um, and there's usually, and in this case, you can see up front, a lot of questions that are more to survey what's going on in the state. And this year, not surprisingly, they were very interested in affordable housing. So the first couple pages were unscored, but we did, with the help of our planner, complete those those questions they don't affect our grade but they're trying to obviously see how prepared towns are for that there are a number of other unscored questions they were i, I can't cite them off the top of my head but by and large it's you know financial budgetary procedure um uh you know practices probably i would say <laughs> argue it's laws that they know towns have forgotten about and they throw it in there so we all remember and ask our attorneys what we're supposed to do and then we start doing it right. So it's an opportunity to kind of revisit our practices and, and do better. Uh, so I don't resent this exercise, although, you know, it would be nice if it was shorter. Um, there's about 69 questions and, you know, some take longer than others. Uh, but just as a headline, we got 39 points, which exceeds the requirement in order to get our full state aid allocation. So that's our typical performance and we will continue to do our best to get that type of score. I wasn't going to What's go the to, highest score that you can get? I actually don't know because they tell you what you have to put the minimums. They don't mm -hmm. and because there's so many unscored <coughs> questions, mm -hmm. I'm not totally sure. I guess I'd have to go in and answer. We didn't get a hundred percent. Um but uh but I don't think that's that's obviously not the expectation. I think they want to just get these things back up on our radars and try to, you know, keep you know, you don't know if you're not, if you don't know. So that's pretty much how I use it every year. And, you know, I work with the clerk's office and the CFO, and then we start to, we go, oh, we better start doing that. And so we register for this. And a lot of the things you can do in advance of submitting. So we do take care of a lot of it in advance of submitting. Um, but in general, um, you know, we do well and we did. How about our reporting that we have to report our annual reporting? That that's and something council. on here that um, the financial disclosure mm -hmm. um, requirements is something they emphasize, I would say, 
in the last few years of my memory. Those are those things you have to do online, you know, what properties you own, et cetera, sources of income. Uh, and that does affect our score. Uh, not just the governing body has to fill those out, but boards and commissions and everybody, certain action taking boards and commissions, I should say, like the planning board, for example. Um, we don't get points for them not completing it, but we do get demerits if our council members don't complete. So just be aware. So it's, it's if, if no other reason for this for this purpose. No, the reason I'm gonna call you out and say y'all didn't report. <laughs> I call you out individually. And you could get in trouble. Yeah, I know you had to figure yeah. that out. Yeah. So um, but so those are the kinds of that's a good example, Mayor, of the kinds of practices they want to make sure we're following. Oh. Yes. Um uh I I hope that this is is an a um done with what we can improve on. Is there any, was there anything that you scored on and said, oh, that's something we, ought, we could do? Is there, is the there financial any... disclosure. Was <laughs> there was there one? one where we didn't there have 100%, big... so I... Yeah, because that's an easy one. Uh, right. So that's one we should definitely improve on for right. next year. Um, and uh, Jen got to tell us. She does. She nags. I know she tells. <laughs> no, she has to say We are responsible people. adults, and when you receive these things in your email, mm -hmm. we should act accordingly. No one has to tell us that we have to do X, Y, and Z. We took on this, and we know we have some financial risk, fiduciary responsibility that we have to do. And if this is going to affect our scoring and get us lower. And it affects, it affects, impacts all of us. It impacts the town in the, in the long run. So we have a responsibility to fill those out. I would say as soon as you get them, fill them out and get rid of it. You don't have to worry about it. And once you get set up, it, it is easier. Mm -hmm. It saves it from your... It's the same thing. It's, yeah, it's just as like... As long as you exactly. have a big Yeah, 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 yeah. It's safe. Yeah. Right, right, right. You win the lottery by the state of Minnesota. You're yeah. all right. Yeah. yeah exactly. There you go. Um, and I would say... There's one that's perennially on there that we're a no is there's one, we, we file all our contracts with PERC, which is the agency that monitors our union contracts. However, there's this other requirement that you have to calculate the value of the contracts. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have, we have not done that in that. We kind of knew we had a little cushion. They don't penalize us for that. That is something I would like to, for the next round of contracts, improve, you asked what we would like to improve upon, because that's one I know. So PERC. Of perk contracts um, because how you assign how they want you to assign the values is very specific and you have to kind of translate your contract to their format and it's not easy um, but that's something that I am committing for the next round of contracts so we do report our contracts in just but but so they have them on file but that's an extra step it's basically kind of like a user friendly for them as I kind of interpret it so that they can easily see what's going on in the state and I, I guarantee you many towns don't fill those out because I we happen to be talking into the school boards. You That's know, great I, that we got way above the scores. Of the yeah so we, we have cushion for room for growth <laughs> so but uh, there's a lot of rules <laughs> is one of my takeaways from this exercise. But that was one of the big ones from mayor and council. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. one that you guys can certainly. That's was there any other? Um, there were not that comes to mind that were okay. specific to your role, yeah. um, but that's that's one. The one I just mentioned was one I know. I don't like to answer no two years in a row, and that's what I will tell you. I'm confessing the perk one I answered no two years in a row because it was just a lot of work to to put that. It's not as easy as they make it seem. Oh yeah, just follow this thing. You have to go through and. But we're going to be doing steps for improvement. So that's yeah. that's the other one. Cool. So anyway, cool. I'm I'm pleased if you, after you have a chance to look at it, if you have any other questions, what, what's that? If, you know, when we have a whole year to when? do better okay. next year. No, okay. we're done. It's in. It had to be in by October 31st. Mm -hmm. We did have to discuss it in a work session. That's also mm -hmm. a requirement. And mm -hmm. Jen had to certify as part of her submission that it was on the agenda for this meeting. Mm -hmm. So there's, mm -hmm. you know, it has a value. And we do have the whole year to work on the ones we want to do better on. So hopefully now they don't keep every question every year. So, you know, they have to drop something sometimes, but it is a best practice to, you know, keep evolving and we have gotten better over time. All right. Thank you. Sure. <coughs> Ex-assessor. This one's going to be real short. I know, very short. <laughs> uh, because I, uh, I had hoped to have more information. This was a little bit of a, 
in case, but I wanted you to be aware, we have a new tax assessor, Logan Otrute. He is also the assessor in Rahway. We received a letter from the city asking from the CFO and the administrator if we want to consider a shared service. And I said, and I checked in with the mayor and Matt and Lynn and just said, sure, let's find out more. And it's all about what's the agreement look like. We're nowhere there yet, but I just wanted you to know that was it. Obviously, we want to look at the costs and see if it's going to cost us a lot more, but also it might offer us some flexibility because right now he's kind of limited on Monday mornings and a shared service might mean he could flex his time a little more easily between his two days. So I was happy to entertain it. Um, I was hoping to have connected with them before this meeting, uh, but I had just, things didn't happen. So at least it's on your radar and we'll find more. I've been talking with Sapna about it because we need some, we actually share an attorney. So uh, they, they also are represented by Raynown. And mm -hmm. so we might have to get figure that out as well if, if we're going to do an agreement. Okay. So that's where they're at. <laughs> so, so, that so, one was so easy. He it multiple municipalities, right? But he wasn't a share, right? right. It was a little bit. This right. one they want to share, which right. I think he would also, be a benefit to I us. I could get into a lot of the, the weeds on, on how the different range. A lot of the rules have changed about having multiple towns mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Right. Okay. Um, we still have a way forward if the share doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. He'll just have to use his personal time when he's not there. And so be it. Um, but there, there could be some upsides for us. And I know we're always looking for ways to partner right. towns. Mm -hmm. So this might be one. Uh, we didn't have time to figure something like that in advance of Tom's departure. So we need an assessor. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is a considerable cost savings. It's it's it, we haven't haggled the deal out, but it would be probably fairly neutral to us. You know, I wouldn't call it a savings, but I wouldn't call I it, it, would be the, it would be a benefit. It would be an it would advantage. Be time and it's the flexing, the flexing and, yeah. and having his a little more availability. And or, supported by both. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> and just to clarify, the shared service would just be exclusively with the uh, Rotway and. So Empire. the way that would work is they would be the. He would be their employee, and we would sh the share is we we're, we're sharing part of his time. Right, because he's a full time answer. employee of Rahway, yeah. and we'd be the sole municipality that you know shares in that, and we get some of his time. And yeah, it may be okay. Sounds worth yeah. exploring. But sure. right now, we're, he's our we assessor just, in right, the meantime. Right, so part, yeah. he's already in, and yeah. they made this yeah. offer, and we think we think it's a great deal. Or we just want to hammer out some stuff. It's worth understanding the job. Right. All right, Hops Grant. Chief, <laughs> I made it. I put an extra chair for you. <laughs> Are you gonna wear your helmet? Chief, <laughs> nice. No disintegrations. Oh, that was it. <laughs> um, so uh, early last year, we were made aware of this grant from the federal government called the COPS Grant, which is community-oriented policing. Um. It was given out to New Brunswick a couple of years ago. Can you Brunswick. say what's some of the components of the grant? What does it do when you say community policing? What are some of the benefits of having this grant? So it's it falls under that umbrella of community policing. And the idea is to supplement municipalities with money to offset the cost of hiring new officers. Uh, in the um, You have to pick a category of what the officers will do, but it, it, it has to come into some kind of community-oriented policing type service. So um, saw the grant was out there and we, we went for it. Uh, we filed ours under the auspices of uh, combating bias crime, right? Because that's a problem we've had in town that's been significant. Um, uh, I think New Brunswick got it last year. I forget what theirs was, South Brunswick a couple of years ago, but it's, it's not, a, doesn't happen a lot. We've not a lot of towns getting it. Um, so there was some extensive paperwork and things like that that had to get accomplished before we started. I talked to the mayor, we talked to public safety. Now go for it. So, all right, we're going to go for it. Um, I really didn't think our chances of getting this group very high at all. I thought <laughs> this is a federal grant. A federal grant, a certain amount of money. They give out a certain amount, uh, and that's it. Um, so, Lieutenant Soden did all the paperwork, did all the groundwork, did all the legwork, talked uh, with uh, our HR and did all the calculations and stuff, and submitted all the paperwork. Lo and behold, we get a letter from Pallone uh, saying that we were awarded the grant. I think it's the first right. time in, since I've been here yeah. we got awarded. Right. And I've been here for 24 years, so. So it's a, a total of $375,000 that the government's going to give us. Um, 
and it is to offset the cost of hiring three officers. We have five years to use the money. Uh, there is a match on the other side. It doesn't cover the full value. <coughs> of the uh, it gets a foot in the door, and then we can slowly start taking over the expenses of the cops. And it gets us back to pre-2003 police staffing levels, um, which is important to me for a bunch of reasons. Our call volume has gone up significantly in the last five years. Um, things are getting in the whole world crazier, I'm sure you know. I mean, I've never had to call you guys about shootings before. How many have we had in the last three years in town? Right? It's getting more and more dangerous for the cops to do the job, which means the cops are in danger. The community's in danger, right? So we need to get more bodies, and uh, this is a way to offset some of that cost and to really provide an avenue to start the process. So um, that's where we're at. I've met with Terry a couple of times. Um, Tennis Soden wanted to be here tonight. He could not make it tonight. He couldn't change his schedule around to get here. Um, but he really did the, the yeoman's work on, on this one. So um, I'm here if you have any questions and uh, to see what happens next. Just in terms of, we talked about this a, a little bit. It's 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 like an initial set of grants to to bring them on board, and then as they develop, eventually we share the we we take over the costs. Mm -hmm. and, right. It's never enough to cover the full value of the cop, it, right. the salary and and fringe together. Right. right. But it it gives us three years of a cushion as we hire a new officer to offset. It comes out to about I think a third of the overall costs when we're all said and done with three officers. And it's not tied to a specific officer. So if one of, we hire an officer and that officer goes someplace else, or <laughs> hires, or we can backfill with it. We could backfill with, with somebody new, right? Okay. So if, if, if I hire um, Bob and Cindy and, and Bob and Cindy decide they want to go to Edison, right. we have to hire two more. Okay, right? but we still are able to use the money to hire. Right? Yes, I mean, there's a lot of fine print. I mean, Terry and I looking mm -hmm. at the paperwork that's involved, it is significant. There's lots of, you can do this, you can't do this, you can do this, you can't do this. We made contact with our grant coordinator for New Jersey. Uh, Lieutenant Soden has spoken with her and Terry has spoken with her um, to try to get more information to see where we, we, need to, we need to go with all this stuff, what we can and can't do. Um, I talked to the chief in Perth Amboy, who has gotten this award in the past and got, got some input from him on how things go. And, uh, yeah, we can, we can replace uh, like that. Um, but the idea is to increase our overall number and stay at that level. So that's that's the purpose. I'm assuming these new officers, there would need to be some kind of special training, right? Because since it's community oriented. So all of our officers are trained with community oriented policing. So that's what they call the grant. Um, they're not going to be community officers. They will still be a patrol officer or a detective or whatever. They'll be like a regular right police officer. Okay. We just have to expand our community policing a little bit, which, as you can see tonight, <laughs> we, yeah, yeah, we're well yeah. on the way to do it. Um, and our thing is basically to, to handle, you know, more of the bias type stuff that we're doing, especially this last year. You know, the bias uh, reports have come uh, after October 7th have been significant. Um, and we've always had, you know, that reported more here. Um, I, I think that's because we have a lot of people here who are um, protected class. They're, they're eligible for the bias type stuff, but I also think, and, and, and uh, we worked really hard to get there, I think we've made a lot of our community feel comfortable coming to us with their problems or before they would. A lot of towns, they, the bias crimes don't get reported because the community doesn't feel safe going to the police. Uh, we worked really hard to build those bridges and now we have it where our bias numbers are going up, not because the crime's going up. We have more people comfortable to come to talk to us mm -hmm. and tell us this is why. Um, part of the, the grant um, uh, application was we had to get letters of endorsement from the community. Um, we have letters from the synagogues, we have letters from Jewish Federation, we have letters from NAACP, we have letters from the Trump Church of Park, we have letters from all these different community groups and individual citizens who wrote us these glowing reports of, of how Highland Park Police deals with the public, deals with the community, uh, interacts with the community, um, and how <coughs> change in how they're proud of us and how they support more officers in Highland Park because of those reasons, uh, which to me, I think is the most important part of this whole thing. Even if we didn't get the grant, those letters alone tells me we're doing the right thing, we're doing well. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Excellent. 
Yeah, just one thing I wanted mm -hmm. to report out on, because I know, Mayor, you'd expressed some concerns mm -hmm. on the budget, because as the chief indicated, mm -hmm. these grants don't cover the full freight. It's a minimum of 25%, but I just want to be real. The cost of police officers is high. Mm -hmm. So the salary steps are quick. And so that means their salaries year to year go up faster than 2%, 3%. You know, that's part of the contract. Um, and the benefits that we provide all employees, including police officer, are expensive. And so we are, I don't have an exact calculation, but there, there is over and above, we will be more than matching. <laughs> I'll put it that way, the grant requirements. Um, the other thing, but I've looked at some of the preliminary numbers for next year. And one of the things I remember, Chief, was we have some things falling away. Um, we had budgeted for an extra staff member this year that we didn't pursue. So that's already something that's in the budget. So that won't be an increase. Yeah. And we also had that initial um, uh, kind of one-time outlay for the dispatch relocation, which is about $100,000 mm -hmm. that was had to be in last year's budget, will not be in this year. So we had some things that will help us ease into this. It's still gonna end up being three highly well-paid individuals. But the other thing we discussed, and we just hadn't mentioned it here, with the redevelopment that we've got, the new units coming on board, hopefully in the next three to five years, this was also one of the things that we kind of rationalized the application with beyond the bias and the need to take that really seriously was the need, if the call volume's up to here now, once we have more people living downtown, there's going to be more issues and, you know, staging this over time before we get to open doors might make some sense. So I just wanted to mention that as well. Um, just one of the priorities that we have in town is making sure that our town remain a safe place so people feel safe and welcoming. So having these three new, these three positions that will be in play once we start doing more redevelopment, more people moving into town is to make sure that everyone feels safe and protected in town. Does it require three at a time or can you stagger? You can, so we have five years, the, the, the grant went into effect uh, October 1st of this year and it expires, everything's gotta be done um, on September 30th of 2020. Okay, that might help the fiscal aspect as well. Yeah, so we don't have to hire three at a time. We don't have to hire one. We've also talked about an academy hire, which is a So we have some, we have some, have some ideas, 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 but I really thought this needed, but at the end of the day, all of you needed was to hear all of us. Five years. And to know that there will be a budget impact. Step four, potentially, police officers, which isn't nothing. Right. So it's just, but I don't know that it didn't rise to because I just I wanted eyes open yeah, on that. It's yeah. not, but I, I think based on all the things we just discussed, I think we can make it work. Any questions? I just have um well that's three. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> um what is the uh, total um what what is the total grant? Three hundred and seventy five. Three seventy five. It's one twenty five a year. Yeah. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Um and can you, I mean, I, I, I appreciate it, like getting back up to staffing levels from over 20 years ago, particularly as we experienced population growth. Where are the, where are the current, I mean, where would you say there are the current holes in the, or I mean, where, where are the gaps that we need to fill? Patrol. Yeah. So uh, right now, what, what I've done, we, we historically had a two officer minimum on the road, um, which is not a lot for a town employee with 17,000 now. No, 15. 15,000. <laughs> so we're two, two, two officers, you know, in charge of the whole town. Um, I did some reorganizing and I, I made it. So now the night shift has two five-person squads. So the minimum sampling on nights is three. Days is still stuck at two. Most days we have a detective and you know, admins here. We can work out if we need to. But on the weekends or holidays or times when we're not here or not able to, you know, they're still stuck at two. So being able to plus everything up in patrol to adequate numbers where I can have five person, people on the squad, a sergeant, four officers on each squad, give me 20 officers total in patrol, and now let me do three person minimums, uh, which is huge for, for safety. I don't have to start splitting people up. I can at least have one pair go to a serious call. You know, the, the availability for that, the potential for that is much higher. Um, it also helps with things like covering crossing guard positions, um, you know, any kind of community event. I have somebody I can pull from 
Uh, this weekend we had trunk or treat, uh, not trunk or treat, I'm sorry, this weekend we had the GEA operation take back. And then last minute, one of the temples called for help with the escort for a funeral and I had nobody left to, to offer. Um, unfortunately, um, you know, that would kind of start alleviating some of those pressures, which is just non-routine, but normal stuff, let alone emergency stuff. That's just, you know, normal stuff that we do as a police department for our residents and, and businesses and whatever else in town. Um, not even including like if, if something bad happened, bad car accident or, you know, uh, aggravated assault or something like that. So um, one extra body doesn't sound like a lot, but the way we use it, it's huge. Definitely. Yeah. No, 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 no question. Um, and then I guess I, I just had a question about the grant. Are there any other considerations that we should be aware of when it comes to the federal grant? Are there any stipulations or anything that's kind of out of the ordinary? I'm going of, through like, that reading exercise now it's not like that she said there's a grant portal and you have to click through I think our grants pretty there yes in the sense that I think there's a lot of reporting requirements I'm sure finance will have to work and provide payroll reports and all that kind of stuff just to substantiate the expenditures and all that but because it's pretty cut and dry it's covering the salaries of the and benefits of these three individuals, it's it's really not that hard. It's also it's not like and because a lot of and there are other expenses like uniforms and this, but it, de minimis in in it's it's the benefits and the the salary that's the majority. So I I'm not too worried based on what I've read so far. You get five. I was very relieved to hear we get five years because. It's, it's not like we can snap our fingers and three people start on the same day and the grant starts mm -hmm. ticking. And I think that recognizes that. I do think, you know, the, the advice was don't delay too much because you be, it does take a while. And so while we might say, oh, we want to stagger some to 2026, we, we may or may not want to do that. Maybe we, you know, we have to think that through because, you know, you're going to have to pay one way or the other. So it's really you know, shifting around your first year is going to be your hardest hit, you know, because that's the first, you know, time you're bearing the brunt of that. And so we're going to look at this year's budget because we're unfortunately this hit right when we're right. just starting the budget pulling together. So, um, but based on our, you know, it, it's going to, you know, that's why we're having this conversation. We're going to have to own this project uh, in next year's budget one way shape or form. And that's why I wanted it to, to really have this discussion and you know like this so we all can comment on it because it is going to be a hit and yeah. we have a window in which we want to work within but we also want to bring it to you Stephanie as chair of finance for you to start taking a look at that. So I want to so could we budget less for overtime? With this new, do you think? <laughs> I, uh, uh, I listen. So, Bill <laughs> is uh, yeah. So, I, I don't. I mean, I can budget less. We can budget less, but, but, I, budget less, but, but, but like, we have to. But, but I think one of one second. I think one of the benefits of having this grant, if we, once we get all three, it will help to reduce the overtime. Because right. yeah. we're running on a, a skeleton's crew right now. So, so once we have covered. the orders set we're up with the, the, the mm -hmm. so you'll have less of overtime um, that would be doled out. So it would be a cost saving in itself. Because if we right. look at our overtime budget now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's quite substantial. Um, but Chief doesn't want to. No, no, no. Uh, listen, there's good overtime, there's bad overtime. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, Sometimes yeah. there's overtime and you just have there's to. There's a natural that. disaster. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 No, yeah. I know. no, but if somebody calls out and you have to bring someone in, right. that's, you know. That's right. the control. Now, uh, we budgeted our overtime this year like we budgeted for last year, but we also, our dispatchers moved. Yes. We are significantly under budget in our overtime because we haven't had to put a cop on the desk. That has saved us a lot of money. Um, which is good. Um, now, I can't predict where the overtime is going to come from, what shift, right? But having the extra officers on each squad <clears throat> with that minimum change, it should reduce overtime. But again, I can't guarantee that. I mean, I might put the extra cop on this shift, on shift C, and shift A is the one with overtime. I, 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 you know, I, but when you, because all the departments submit their budget. Right. But but the savings wouldn't necessarily take place until after you're fully staffed, like hypothetical savings. Oh, well, you know, right. think about it, because right now we don't have the jobs. Right, right, right. So right, we're right. at this existing staffing. There's going to be a period where 
they're actually a drain because they shadow and they're not mm -hmm. on the road by themselves. And so not only are they not available to do the job, they're also tying up a training officer while they do that. But my hope would be by the time we get through the onboarding that we could incrementally see a reduction. And I was, I didn't want to say it in the meeting, but since you did, you know, I'm going to request an analysis of over time because they do track what kind and all that to try to see if we can attribute some of the reduction in this last year. And maybe we can shave off a little if we're feeling confident it's mostly due to right. the dispatch, but we don't want to cut ourselves too short if we have a Hurricane Sandy or who oh, knows yeah. what, you know, you got to just be there's the unknowns out there that we always have to be ready for. But because they do track the type of overtime, we should be able to make some informed budget decisions once this program's up and running. But it's not like in 2025, because we got this grant, we can lower our overtime, you know, it's, but we might be able to shave some off based on our experiences last year. Right. right? So, and a, and a lot of our, the bigger chunks of overtime are for things like the street fair. Mm -hmm. there's a lot of and we know those and we budget. We know those, yeah, we budget. Yeah. That, those are like the big chunks. It's a little, somebody called out sick or an officer gets hurt and can't come to work. Those are the ones that we don't know and we can't really plan for. Mm -hmm. We have to be ready for them no matter what. So, um, I mean, sometimes you have to budget for them anyway, and then hopefully we come in under, like significantly under budget because we budgeted for this because, you know, oh, I know so-and-so is going to have sh shoulder surgery and they're going to be out yeah. for, you know, six weeks. And we have to make sure there's enough officers to work that over time. Um, is the, does this grant, is, is it exclusively for staffing or are there, is it program, there's no program? This is a allocation? hiring, that is what this is. Specifically for. Got it. designated. They um, have other programs for <coughs> financial you know, yeah. training right. and other kinds of stuff. But this one, we had applied, one of the reasons I didn't think we were going to get this was we had applied for the kind of equivalent uh, grant with a grant. It was one of our first tests of using a grant writing service uh, for the firefighter version of this grant. Mm -hmm. I forget the name of it. Safer, but I don't know. Somewhere the F is firefighter. But um, we didn't get it. So I'm like, oh, these must be really hard, you know, because I thought we made a really good, mm -hmm. you know, we have a similar tale to tell. Should we have Southern department. try again next year? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They gave that grant to Perth and Boy. I was watching that. <laughs> so, <laughs> Perth and Boy um, got, got the cost too. They got this one yeah, too. Get oh, they got yeah. both? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, because it's based yeah. on their son. So, yeah. so yeah. this is very, this, this grant is yeah. meant for your staffing. And I just have one last question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for public safety committee, um, is the uh, will the plan be to develop some type of hiring schedule so we can yes. budget? I mean, it's going to be phased, right? Yeah. I mean, we're, we're not. I don't think the goal is to hire three at once. Right? No, and we so part of the grant was we had to determine um, like a, a target hiring pool. So uh, we listed that as as uh, as armed services veterans uh, as part of our targeted pool. Um, and then I have to look at the mayor and Phil to figure out if we want to do more academy, more certified. Certified is a little cheaper. You don't have to put the academy, but it's a little more expensive. It's a higher step. Um, and it's fat. It, uh, certified is faster. Mm -hmm. Like most of our officers yeah, are certified. Right the right last right. academy we put through was um, Lewis Middleton because mm -hmm. it was a growth. We didn't need to replace somebody right away because mm -hmm. you put somebody through the academy, you're looking at a year and a third, a year and a half from mm -hmm. starting the hiring announcement to the person's actually accountable as staff mm -hmm. so they can be a cop on their own and you trust them to make the decisions so that means the academy the uh, onboarding field training ghosting and then release mm -hmm. so you're looking at a year and a half from the day you put out your hiring announcement to you do your interviews and you pick who you want and then the academy has to start and then you have to do this that and the other thing so um, there's all those those different steps to it as well so i have to work with with phil and the mayor and figure out all right what's our strategy we want all three certified for the academy, two and one, one and two. And then from there, look at budget and look at um, a timeline. You know, maybe we do one and then six months later we do another. And then a year later we do another. And maybe we do one and a year later we do another, you know, and, and try to figure out what's going to work the best for the borough um, and have the, the most impact on the police department with the least impact on our budget. Uh, <coughs> No, because I, I think, you know, I mean, I, obviously, you know, when they 
when when an officer is hired, they're at a salary that is much lower. So that may make budgeting more manageable, right. you know, as you move forward. And I'm, and my guess is that we, you know we may look for um, other ways to offset, uh, you know, just grow expenditures generally. So that's 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 what I was uh, uh, just trying to understand the hit. But uh, yeah, it's great. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional questions? I would just say it sounds like a no-brainer to me. So I thank you for all the work that you and Lieutenant Soden have put into so getting this application. So thank so you. Lieutenant Soden did all mm -hmm. uh, it came to us through, from Terry's office. Like, hey, these are out there. I think you got them from one of your groups, right? One of those, yeah. maybe the mayor even forwarded it to and, me. Uh, and all yeah. those, ah, and we looked at it like, all right, we'll, we'll, give, it, we'll give it a shot. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you know, so I, it's a long I shot. Figured it was like, see, like, but yeah, it worked. Yeah. It works. So we're, yeah. we're, 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 we're excited. It gets when it yeah. works out. It the was, portal alone. The yeah. portal alone. And you have to log into like three different ports mm -hmm. to get to the grant. I mean, it's yeah. unbelievable. So <laughs> when you ask the federal, that's what's going to be the nightmare. It's right. like, what it which login? Where do I go? But Some of these, I'm these confident read all the things. between Lieutenant Soden and Rhea, they'll be able to manage the grant in terms of its, you know, the reporting and then the implementation. The Okay. Seeing that there's no more questions, we're going to move on to planning and remaining for A R B. So, remind everyone, the American Rescue Plan uh, was uh, a, a, a plan that happened a while ago as kind of a response to the Back pandemic. COVID. And it's specifically, a lot of municipalities, us included, got state and local fiscal recovery funds. We have been saving a good chunk of ours for the Woodbridge Avenue road project, which we'd already actually earmarked 500,000 for the, just the roadway improvements we're responsible for. And then about a million-ish for the water main replacement. Mm -hmm. Well, as those of you on Public Works and uh, some of the other committees know, the county's program is delayed. So this is a shared agreement kind of because it's their roadway but the water mains ours, mm -hmm. but we're bidding it out as a package because obviously the restoration, it's dumb to do the road and then restore it, rip it up and then do the water main and you know all that stuff. So they were really great about accommodating the water main addition and some other factors into our, our project. But for some reason, they haven't gotten through the planning, you know, the finalizing the plans. The next step on their end, it has to go to NJDOT because they're using some of their local aid dollars for this. Uh, for their portion, uh, and then it has to go out to bid. We have to have these funds allocated by year end as part of the Recovery Act's requirements. So what I would I propose, and we've kind of already got the wheels in motion, is one of the areas that is kind of just a no-brainer from the American Rescue Plan kind of uh, rules. Our eligible projects are water and sewer projects. Mm -hmm. And we have two projects that uh, this will help us really advance. So this 1.2 million will be shared between these two. One is to do extensive, as much sewer and manhole lining throughout the town as we can. It's in a, a more affordable way to tighten up pipes that are, they have to be in good enough repair that the lining will work but they don't have, you know, be in mint condition. And that will, if all goes well, help with in, uh, inflow and infiltration, which as a reminder, those are cracks in sewer pipes that take in either rainwater or leaking water from our, our water mains and things that then we pay again to clean. So it's bad. So, and we, and we do see a trend upward with that, although this dry spell has probably assisted us in curbing that for the last month. Uh, so it's, it's not a good thing. It's not, no, it's not a good thing. So, um, so that's the one project I would, I don't have exact allocations because we need to, we've got the bid specs just about ready to go out the door so that we can bid these out. But basically we'd want to allocate this roughly half to one and a half to the other. Um, we have guiding the sewer main linings. We have the we did a full TV inspection of the entire town. Mm -hmm. And from that, there's a report that Middlesex Water has gone through and ranked. And so we have five, four, three, two, one, fives and fours being the highest priority. We are going to pick the fives and fours that we think will do the most for inflow and infiltration, but also the pipes are suitable for 
you know, we had this problem, I don't know if you recall, on Braun Avenue, we were set to do the lining. We had to pause because upon further inspection, the pipe was in too poor of a condition. We had to repair the pipe and then we could line the remainder. So um, what we're trying to do is pick, using our report, the, the, the highest priority kind of most bang for our buck uh, areas. And we can do quite a bit aligning with $600,000. Um, the other half relates to the lead service line uh, uh, replacement kind of effort in the state. Kind of the last hurdle for us is just identification remaining of the remaining unknowns. Mm -hmm. We're almost done thanks to the um, meter replacement program with the identification of materials between the curb and the and the meter because we did all these meter changes. So while we were there, we tested the service line material. Um, so we've got good data there. And as we wrap up the meter project, we'll continue to clean that up. <laughs> but where we're at a loss, if unless there's been we have data on file, some of which we do, um, service line material, is what's going on between the curb and the main. And we really need a better handle on that. The state wants us to, it'll help us shape our program. So what there is, is a way you can hydro excavate the curb boxes, uh, basically at the, in the verge and the dirt, and you can clean it out with a special, so you're not bringing a Everybody excavating machine it, yeah. and breaking pipes and stuff. It's a lo much lower impact where we can reveal the pipe, test it, and that gives us a reasonable assumption about what's going on from there to the to the to the main. Mm -hmm. As a reminder, the homeowners own the full service line, but the utility us is required to manage and implement this program. Mm -hmm. So this funding should go a long way towards finishing up our inventory. So it's it's a data collection uh, exercise. Uh, we actually used a chunk of our our money uh, to develop our our lead service line replacement plan and some of these other things. And this is a major to do in our lead service line is, yeah. is the unknowns. So while I'm very disappointed at the progress on Woodbridge Ave, I'm actually really excited about being able to make, make some real headway on these mm -hmm. longstanding issues. Um, so that's the proposal. We've actually got RFPs uh, in production. Louis, our, our kind of point of contact with Middlesex Water is developed. He's an engineer, he's developed the specs and we're working with Sopna's office to kind of finalize the bid package with the notice going out uh, this week um, because we have to move, because in order to hit our meeting dates, we had to kind of move ahead. So um, I just wanted to make sure before we hit that point that everybody's comfortable um, and there will be um, resolutions on the next meeting agenda sure. just to kind of make all the cancel the old 500,000 and reallocate to these two projects. It's great. It's great. Any question? Are we under, um, because it's our, does this funding sunset, sunset? are we under? Some this is, we're under pressure timeline? to award, yeah. but then we have two more years to complete the project. Okay. So if you ever wonder why it takes forever for these federal projects to actually take root, I now have a full appreciation. <laughs> it's like, wow, because, and, and there's, there's more rules to how you spend federal money. Um, so that can also just slow us down a little bit because it's just more, more producer. The reporting for this, this funding is not terrible. Uh, we, we've been doing it, we'll continue to do it. Um, so uh, I'm excited about the opportunity I am, in, in hindsight, I wish we'd had this conversation a month ago, but we are where we are. We're getting it done. <laughs> but none of these projects are new. It's just the timing is different. And the, um, do we have any sense from the county when the third end is going to I keep asking. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I will go back. I'll and say the council's yes, asking. Yes. Uh, That's why I'm asking. Yeah. Uh, because I know there's some, urgency, there's some interest. Like we're getting a whole traffic intersection upgrade and right. we've been talking about that as well um, at, at 11th. So we're all eager and believe you me. So uh, I will. Switching, switching this money to the ARP money doesn't mean that we're going to have to delay our end. No, because we know. have money left and I should have yeah. mentioned that. Yeah. We have a capital ordinance. Okay. So I'm just reallocating what yeah. I was yeah. going to put. To, I, I'm yeah. switching. So yeah. so yeah. we have a capital ordinance for water sewer that will cover mm -hmm. the main. And we have money left in one of our existing roadway improvement 
um, to do that. So um, we should be okay. Sounds good. Good. Okay. All right. Next on the agenda is the shuttle bus. Best for last. Jason would be happy to have this conversation. <laughs> Very interesting. So I've been talking with Mike. I've been talking with Kim. We need a bus. And they just cost money. And there's no easy grant that I could find. We tried to look at borrowing, renting, to kind of plug the hole while we had find more time to find the money. Um, and it's, it's starting to become a hardship for the folks that rely on it, a hardship for the department trying to keep all the balls in the air. And so I, I've kind of come to terms with the fact that, and I'm recommending, I checked with finance, we have 500,000 in our capital improvement fund. We probably need about 150 to do a, a good shuttle bus. We will probably go with a 15 person or less because mm -hmm. if we go with, with the same size, I think our current one is eight, 17 or 18. When CDL. you get over 17, you need a CDL, CDL. with passenger certification, which is really hard. Uh, we've, we've sent people to class. They have not been able to pass. Our DPW guys do not have that. They have CDLs, commercial, all the other stuff, but they don't have that. If we go with a smaller one, any CDL can drive it. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it's just, it makes sense. And it was funny. I was talking with, when I was looking at electric options, I was talking with someone at Sustainable Jersey because I was trying to find out what kind of electric buses are out there that people are using. And I said, well, I need it to be 15. And they're like, why does everybody want that? And I go, because of the passenger. So it's not just us. It's, I think there are a lot of, um, and even like, I think some of the MCAT or now it's ride. Right. They're, they're small smaller as well. They're smaller. Because it's just, there's not as many uh, people out there who have the training. Fortunately, our current driver does, but, and we certainly want qualified drivers. So don't take this as we don't care about your, your driving ability. But that's, so my, I would like to have, a capital ordinance introduced at the next meeting to basically put the money, get, get allocate the money for the purpose of a new community shuttle bus. Yes. Any questions? Um, I volunteer to go shopping at the lead. So, <laughs> Very good. Uh, yes. I know, Elsie and I have our short list of yeah, things. Yeah, we I will be happy to go in and shop at the lead. Yeah. To meet somebody. It's, Wait, it's, can can the last the yeah. 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 If we find a grant later I asked, on, I asked if we can do a letter. It's, it's, there are limited numbers. I, I did ask for some research for what buses are being, because I don't want to just get any electric <laughs> shuttle that you know, we find, like, I want someone that has some experience with it. I got a couple models, but just the, the vehicles themselves are double the price. And then you have to, we, they will be able to charge at our existing chargers, mm -hmm. but I think we probably need to upgrade our, our, uh, and Charging add systems. chargers. Yeah. So I really wanted to, and I, allocating this money doesn't mean it's a no, <laughs> because we might be able, if we might be able to find a grant to get the electric shuttle bus, mm -hmm. and then we need to augment it with our funds. So <clears throat> I haven't given up 100%, but I I can't look at Kim again, like where I don't have a way forward without that. I mean, I'm just, it, she's impressed upon me how many people rely on it. They, um, they, they, so they, they, I don't want to let reason. our lack of, of money be able to, to, to do that. So, yes, yeah. and, 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 I, and I did explore with the county about anything that they have. Woodbridge, Edison, mm -hmm. South Plainfield, Piscataway. I called everybody mm -hmm. just to see if, what, if they had anything that we could temporarily use for six months. And they're in the same situation. They need buses mm -hmm. too. And thank you for your reference. Yeah, I was talking with Kim about it. So I'm very well aware of like the critical need yeah. for this. So I would just definitely mm -hmm. encourage everyone to uh, you know support this measure. I'm glad that it's every month. Would have been great if we could have worked out one of those solutions. Unfortunately, it's not the reality. I even looked at rent a car, rent bus companies and oh, stuff. Wow. It wasn't even feasible there. You've done your homework. That's awesome. But yeah, but uh, I think now sure. it's time. Now we, we've clearly exhausted all of their options. It's time to move forward with this. And mm -hmm. um, uh, as chair of uh, recreation, I will accept you to join me in shopping for this. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, but I, but there is, there are a couple grants out there. There's one at DP that I'm looking at because where you decommission an old one, there's, there's, but I'm, I'm there's a lot to it, but so wouldn't, we just need to have some money so that we can, it's still going to take months to 
whatever model we buy to, yeah. to get up and, and, and you know procure. Yeah, so that's the other issue. Can I get an electric one on contract or do then do I have to do a bid? It's like the electrics are not, the options just aren't as robust even as the uh, other ones. So unfortunately, I did look hard for that. Hard for that. Um, I was going to ask that about our old one. Is that of any it's value? Called, we'll, we'll, bid, we'll auction it. And if somebody oh, okay. wants to have a passion project, uh, you know, to fix it up, but you know, it was, we were advised it wasn't worth, it was going to be, I believe close to $10,000. Yeah. 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 Uh, some flowers, yeah. a little mobile girl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So it, the new that was when we kind of made the decision because it was like, and, and frankly, was I going to feel really confident sending a bunch of teens to yeah. wherever in, right. in and that's this what happened the last thing. time you that, sent them and it, it died on a team on, trip. On, on, yeah, I thought yeah. terrible yeah. about it. And they really thought on their feet and everything was yeah. fine. But um they, they they had an adult for every Uber to get home. I mean that's literally what happened. Yeah. So uh yeah. So I'm there. <laughs> so I hope you guys will be there. <laughs> I think we all well, support. I know. Yeah. 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 I don't think, yeah. no, I don't think there's a no question. Yeah. That thing was very yeah. Transportation yes. is key. Absolutely. I, I think the, and meeting the seniors the, needs is very important. The more electric, the better. But I agree. Yeah. How yeah. old? How old? Is so. how long I'd have to check. I, Probably I know, about, but it's got to be 15 yeah. years. Yeah. 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 I would definitely. Usable life. So we will get auction and some people buy them for parts and things. You'll never know. Somebody will buy but I wouldn't. It's not going to be a nest egg to purchase. You know, it's not like a down on the next food truck. Yeah. There you go. All right. Now it's time for public comments. Um, total 21 minutes, three minutes per speaker maximum. Comments from members of the, the public attending in person will be heard first, which there's none, uh, followed by those on Zoom. Anyone on Zoom? I see three folks on Zoom. Now would be time to raise your hand. I see no hands, Mayor. Seeing there's none, no further, May. I have a motion to close public participation. So moved. Roll call. I need a second. He's like, Jason. Sorry, I can't hear you. Councilman George? Yes. Councilman Hill? Yes. Council President Hirsch? Yes. Councilman Hirsch? Yes. Councilman Hirsch? Yes. Councilman Hirsch? Yes. Councilman Hirsch? Yes. 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 Motion. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, let's go win the series. <laughs> Good night. Oh. Good night, all. <laughs>